Hi guys, Ryu here with Narrative for Blender and today I want to show you a few shortcuts that are very useful for hard surface modeling. So first one will be invert mode, shift control B and you can bevel verts. If you scroll your mouse, you can go into bevel and you can scroll it down to go in the chamfer. Now this is useful when you want to create stuff like pipes, for example. So if I remove this face and go to object, uh, convert to curve and go to my geometry tab and increase the bevel, I got my curve. I'll of course do it with hard ups because it's much easier. I would simply um, go to um, curve extract, press one S and I'm done. Another shortcut that I want to show you is shift D and alt D. Now shift D is a simply, um, is you simply copy an object, create a duplicate, right? Now two problems with it. Okay. One of them is that if you, for example, edit this object, right? And add some cuts and a bevel and a weighted normals. And for example, a mirror. Okay. Then you got a problem because you can't really duplicate it that way. It will get duplicated with all the modifiers, but you know, booleans will not be applied. So if you want to apply booleans, the only way to do it would be via hard ups, go into operations and shift click it on smart apply. This will apply the booleans, um, but will remove the bevel and the weighted normals. So you can keep editing this cube to your heart's content. If you copy an object, right? And you want to edit it, change the size, shape, whatever. Only one of them gonna get updated. However, if you go via Alt D, this will create a duplicate, but they linked. So if I um, edit one of them, right, the other gets updated. And doesn't matter which one you're going to edit or how many objects you have in a scene, right? If you click on the random one, select everything, rotate it, scale it, every single one of them is going to get updated with the same attributes which is very useful for creating, you know, working on screws, bolts and stuff that repeats itself and it's tiny and annoying to select. You simply just click on one. Next the shortcut would be control A. Now let's say I want to scale this cube to something enormous and then I want to apply and let's scale it on X as well like this. Then I want to create a bevel here, okay, on this edge. See this bevel, it doesn't really work very well and the reason for it is that this was scaled and the scale is not applied and we need to apply the scale to be able to actually tell Blender that these are the default dimensions. And in order to do that, you need to go to control A and apply scale. And now if I'm going to bevel this, it will work as intended. Next shortcut would be alt M. Unfortunately, I can't show it to you in in my modded blender because I'm using different shortcuts and uh, let me tell you how I would do it in my modded blender by the way the mod I'm using for it the add-on is called machine tools and that one is free so if I for example wanted to merge verts in the middle all I need to do is press shift one and if I wanted to merge verts at last last selected I'm gonna press one and I'm done now in vanilla blender you press alt m which is an additional step that I need to perform, which annoys me, which is why I use add-ons. So you can do it at last or at center. And you have also different options there. So that's Alt-M. Another cool thing that you can do with Alt-D regards edges. So let's delete that, select the edge, right click, subdivide, go to vert mode, shift control B, scroll your mouse, and now, if I wanted to extrude it by pressing E, it's not going to work very well because it will create a face. So we need to go and delete this edge, which adds another step to my workflow. Now, if I wanted to extrude this edge this way and create connecting edges at the same time, all I need to do is press Alt D and constrain it to Y axis. And there you go. Now I can select these two, SX, Select these four, Control B, Control Shift B, and I got my pipe. 
Next one would be Shift Z. And Shift Z, let me grab a cube. It's going to be easier to show it on a cube. Now, if you want to move something on an axis, right? You simply press G and move it. But what if you wanted to move it on a specific two axes, but not three? This moves it on X, Y, and Z. Press Shift Z, and you can move it on any axis you want, except for the Z axis. So X and Y. It works the same for scaling. So S will scale the cube, but if I press Shift Z, it will scale it only on X and Y. Shift Y only on Z and X, and Shift X only on Y and Z. Another useful shortcut is a G and double axis tab. So if I press G and Z, I'll move it on Z or Y or X, right? So G, Z, G, X, G, Y. However, if I have a rotated object, global axis doesn't change until I go to Control A and apply rotation, which will reset um, the rotation of an item to zero on all axes. So this is going to be the default rotation. Now, my global rotation here didn't change. However, my local rotation did change. So GZ, you see, Z axis has shifted because I rotated it, right? So you shift it with it. But there is a quicker way to change um, this orientation from global to local if you're working um, on some object. So let's say I wanted to move it this way on the orientation of the face. So on its local rotation, right? All I need to do is press G and Z twice, Z, Z, and the axis will shift. And it will work for an axis. So G, X, X, the same thing, you see? Another shortcut that I use quite a lot is Control I. So let's go to um, face and Let's insert it and then Ctrl I will revert the selection so I can, for example, delete the faces. And this works with everything. So if I select the vert and press Ctrl I and delete the verts, it works the same way. Let's talk about Shift 7. That's the last one I'm going to show you. If I press 7 on my numpad, right? So 7, okay. I'm going to go to top view. But what if my cube is rotated and I wanted to align it to a specific face like this one? Well, if you press Shift 7, right? So Shift 7, you will be aligned to this face in orthographic mode and now you can start editing. Now, the thing is that once you leave this, uh, this uh, Shift 7 view, you still sort of align to it, if you see what I mean. You, the horizon is tilted so in order to get out of it you simply need to change your uh, view to any of these so front top side whatever it simply gets get you out of it so again shift 7 and then get out of it well that's it for this video guys hope you enjoyed it drop me a like and subscribe if you did really appreciate it and i'll talk to you in the next video